What is going on guys? I am so psyched that you're back for video number 17 in my series on making a mobile game with JavaScript. I really hope that introduction was enthusiastic enough for you guys. Today we are going to be improving on our random universe generator. We have our systems in there spawning and we are able to move around the screen but we don't have any planets on our system. So that is the next piece that we are going to start right now. So as you all can see, I am here on our script page and I have our generate random universe function open and ready. So the first thing we're going to do here is right after system data, we're going to create a new variable called planet data. And this is also going to be an empty array. And this array is going to hold all of our planets once they are generated. The next variable we're going to create is actually inside this for loop because for each system we want a different number of planets. So for my game, I did num of planets and I set it equal to a random get random int, remember, between one and five. So that means every single system that generates is going to have a random amount of planets between one or five. So next, we're going to jump down to the bottom right after we push our new system into the system data. And we're actually going to create a new for loop inside of our existing for loop. So we're going to run through j while j is less than the number of planets that we generate. So next we want to give these planets a rotation. So it's either going to spin to the left counterclockwise or right clockwise. And on the demo video you guys saw in the first video, I actually made the mistake, someone pointed it out to me, that the planets were rotating in different directions on the same system, which doesn't really happen. In reality, planets actually all spin in the same direction around their sun. So I made some adjustments since then, and now I have all of them spinning in the appropriate direction, um, just moving at different speeds. So what we're going to do now is actually define a variable before this for loop that's going to get us a random direction. And since you can either have left or right, it's only two directions. So we're just going to do orbit direction. And we're going to set that equal to a get random int between one and two. So just two numbers. If it's one, it'll go left. If it's two, it'll go right. So now inside of the for loop, we're actually going to create an if statement here. And we're just going to check to see if orbit direction equals one else. <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is we're going to define two variables above this. We're going to say speed and we're going to do rotation as the next variable. So now inside of here, we'll say if it's one, then we want it to have a negative rotation or a negative speed and negative rotation. So we'll say in here, if the orbit direction equals one, then we want this to move left counterclockwise. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the speed equal to a get random in <clears throat> between negative 50 and negative 10. And then we're going to go ahead and set the rotation equal to a get random int between negative 180 and negative one. And we're going to do the same thing in the else statement, except reverse those values. So now for the speed, we're going to get random int between 10 and 50. And then the rotation, we're going to get random int between 1 and 180. And we're just going to define a new variable here at the top of the for loop. And we're just going to call it new planet and set that to an empty object. And now here under our if else, we're going to go ahead and we're going to say new planet dot orbit speed. And we're going to set that to equal to speed divided by 100. So then the next part, we're just going to do new planet dot rotation. And we're going to set that equal to our rotation. So the next value we'll actually define here is we want our planets to have different radiuses as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to set new planet dot radius equal to a math dot round. And then inside of this, we'll get a random int between 15 and 21. And then we're just going to divide that value by a thousand. And if you don't know what math dot round is, it's pretty self explanatory. You can also use 
Um, round will just round it to the nearest, highest, or lowest value, but you can also use seal, which will always push the number up to the highest, you know, cutting off the decimal. And then you can use floor, which floor will actually just bring it all the way down. But any way you use it, it will always cut off the decimal, which is what we want. But we're just going to keep round here. And lastly, what we're going to do is we're actually going to create the orbits. So where the orbit is, because we have five different planets that could potentially spawn for each system. So we need locations for them because you know, we don't want them overlapping and spawning on top of each other. So we need to tell them where they can spawn or where their orbit should be. So what we're going to do is I found the easiest way to do this is to make a variable here called orbits and set it equal to an array that just holds 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now what we're going to do is we're going to jump down here and we're just going to create a new variable here called rand orbit index and we're going to set that equal to a get random int between zero and our orbits dot length minus one so now what we're doing is we're getting a, a random number between zero and four to grab one of our orbits that's between zero and four and the reason we do it this way is so that when we do new planet dot orbit and set that equal to our orbits at the random index then after we set that we want to get rid of that value now from the array because we don't want two planets to have the same orbit so then what we'll do is we'll say orbits dot splice and we'll splice out at that orbit index for one so now what happens is we have our array of five but then every time we run through a planet, it splices one of these numbers out. So this array will get smaller and smaller as a random one of these numbers gets taken out. And then of course, the last thing we wanna do here is we would just wanna take our planet data and we wanna push in our new planet. So now that we're pushing in the new planets, we're just getting an array of planets and the, the planets aren't associated with their systems yet. And there's a reason for that because basically we want to save the systems, the planets, and the settlements all in their own tables in the database, which means they can't be inside of each other just yet until we render them out. So for right now, just know that we are generating into that planet array, but we're not actually showing the planets yet or doing anything with them as of right now but we will very shortly. There's just a few things we need to set up before we can start getting those orbits showing on our systems. So guys, I apologize for the delay on this video. I know it's been a little while, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video and make sure to stay tuned for my next video, number 18, which will be coming very soon. Thanks guys for watching and subscribe and like this video, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.